Hi guys and welcome to today's video on transition matrices and their applications. It's the final video of our matrices section and it's going to show how to apply our matrices to some real world situations. We've already looked at using them to solve simultaneous equations and all the theory behind. If you haven't already watched those videos, please head back to YouTube, back to mathsguru.com where you can search for videos by textbook, by chapter and have downloadable notes. It's free to sign up and uh, we'd greatly appreciate it if you would head over there. Um, YouTube's Sign up for me if you can, uh, subscribe. Uh, why? Because basically it just lets me know that people are watching. Never going to be rich, never going to be famous, um, but certainly doing what I can to help as many people out there as possible understand mathematics. Okay, so what is a transition matrix? Basically, a transition matrix is a way of transitioning, that's changing between one of two states. All right, so that's really important, two states. We're going to use an example here of a car hire company who have multiple branches around. We're going to start with two branches, one in Bendigo and one in Colac. And it's from an example from the Cambridge Further Maths textbook. Thank you very much, Cambridge. Don't worry if you're not using it and don't worry if you're not doing further maths. These transition matrices things are universal and hopefully by the end of the video will help you understand these. All right, so a car rental firm has two branches, one in Bendigo and one in Colac. Cars are usually rented in and returned in the same town. Now that's really important, rented in and returned in the same town. However, a small percentage of cars uh, rented in Bendigo each week are returned in Colac and vice versa. All right, so that makes sense. When I've been on holiday recently, I hired a car in LA, I dropped it off on San Diego. Um, and some people will do that. Other people will hire in LA and return in LA because we will have different needs. But this is a diagram or the diagram you're gonna see behind me is basically per week. And that's going to be really important later on in this video. So if we just try and decode what this video means, there is Bendigo and there is Colac. So this 80% loop tells me that 80% of cars that start in Bendigo finish in Bendigo. This one here tells me that 90% of cars that start in Colac end in Colac. 20% of cars which start in Bendigo finish in Colac. And 10% of cars which start in Colac end up in Bendigo. And each week, the number of cars in both Bendigo and Colac is going to change. Again, that's going to come up a little bit later on. So having decoded what that diagram means and putting it into sort of more of a uh, sort of worded situation, we can now turn this into a transition matrix. Now remember, our two states are a car's in Bendigo, a car is in Colac. So here's my transition matrix. I'm going to draw a two by two. It looks fairly big, but my car is either in Bendigo or Colac. Bendigo or Colac. Now the rows and columns also have to stand for something and there's some sort of start condition and end condition. So normally the start are for our columns and the rows are at end condition. And so we know that we start the week by renting our car in Bendigo and returning it to somewhere else. So make sure you keep those distinctions really, really important. Now, the last thing is we never ever put percentages in our transition matrices. We do our decimal multipliers. And so we know that 80%, he says, is the same as a multiplier of 0 0.8. Why? Because percent divided by 100, 80 divided by 100 gives me 0 0.8. Right, so 80% of cars rented in Bendigo are returned to Bendigo. So I'm going to put 80% there. Why? Because I've got Bendigo to Bendigo. 20% of cars rented in Bendigo are returned to Colac. So 20% goes there. 10% of cars rented in Colac are returned to Bendigo, 0 0.1, and this will be 0 0.9. Now, something really important to note here is what each column values adds to. So if I take each of the values in each of the columns and add them together, what does it add to? Well, 0 0.8 and 0 0.2 is 1. 0 0.1 and 0 0.9 is also 1. So that's one of those interesting trick things that's always on an exam to make sure that you understand that transition matrices, their columns must add to 1. Now, don't press stop, not just yet, guys. This is a preview video and you've reached almost the end of it, but it does continue over on mathsguru.com. Mascara.com. Yep, that's my custom website. Bits of it you can see around me at the moment. That has been designed to allow the videos to be easier searched than they are on YouTube. So you can search by chapter, by textbook. Each video has downloadable notes for you, so you can put them in your summary book or your exercise book. There are exam questions and there is more and more content and more stuff coming as time allows. So head on over there. It's absolutely free to sign up and I'm doing everything I can to make sure that you guys enjoy maths and actually take out the mastery of maths. It is not as hard as you think. It is all smoke and mirrors. Okay, thanks very much. Take care guys. I look forward to seeing you in another video.
Stay safe.